Well, today, the first Sunday of Advent, tells us that we are in earnest now in our Lenten journey. And we hear from the Gospel of Mark. We are, as we have been saying in our narrative, our story, the Gospel of Mark, this, this season of the B cycle in the lectionary, as we call it in liturgical circles, this Gospel of Mark, this Gospel of Joe Friday, the Gospel of facts, short to the point. In fact, we've heard this portion of the Gospel, I don't know, maybe four times already. A couple of times, and once in Advent, and once around Christmas season, and then again in Epiphany, and yet now even in Lent. I guess Mark's Gospel is so short, we just have to keep reading it over and over and over again. But partly because, see, this short little portion of it talks about several different things in its brevity. This time, we're not talking about the baptism of Jesus, as we heard it before, but this time we're talking about Jesus going out into the wilderness. And so we read the whole portion of it, because otherwise it would be only one sentence long. And you'd barely have a reading from the Holy Gospel. Now, on this Sunday, on other years, you get these longer lessons, these longer readings, and you can fill in all the details probably in your own mind. Oh, the stories about Jesus going out into the desert and into the wilderness and being tempted by Satan. You know the stories, you know, turn these stones into bread and being taken up on the parapet of the temple and all of those kinds of things. You can fill the story in for yourself. We could talk about all of that, but that's not what today's gospel is about. So that we have to really focus on what the words are that the church gives us today. And so we've just got a few of them. And so that's what we'll do. We'll talk about this. How the Spirit comes upon Jesus and drives him into the wilderness. It's not an invitation. It's not like an invitation you might see in the church bulletin. Oh, we're having a retreat out in the desert and we're inviting you to come. Won't you join us? Sign up. And we'll have a bus and we'll take you out there and we'll have lunch and, you know, all that sort of thing. It's not, it's not that kind of nice little invitation. This is... Mark tells us, in his cryptic and brief way, he drove him into the wilderness. It's almost like Jesus was being forced into it. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. What's interesting to me when I read this is the, the order in which things happen. Because Jesus comes to John, and he's baptized, and then suddenly the Spirit comes on Jesus. Then Jesus is driven into the wilderness. It's God's Spirit that is driving Jesus into the wilderness. And it is in the wilderness that Jesus is tempted. And so, in one way, it is God that is responsible for Jesus getting tested and tempted. It's a little odd, don't you think? When we hear the Lord's Prayer, then later on, we hear Jesus telling us to ask God to lead us not into temptation. Or if we use other words, it's put us not to the test. Maybe because Jesus knew what it was like. So he tells us to pray that way. Pray that we're not put to the test. Because Jesus knew exactly what it feels like. But, that's for another time. Today, we're thinking about what Jesus went through. Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit. And that's what I'd like you to think about. Because, you see, 
The order is important. Jesus was baptized and the Spirit descends upon Jesus. What does that mean? It means that when Jesus went into the wilderness, he didn't go there alone. The Spirit of God was with Jesus as he went into the wilderness. Jesus was not on his own. Jesus was not subject to his own devices, to his own strengths, his own abilities. When he went into the wilderness, Jesus was given everything that God's Spirit represents as Jesus went into the wilderness. The Spirit of God was with Jesus. What does that mean? Well, it means that's true for us, too. You see, because when you were baptized, the same thing happened to you. You were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And at the end of that baptism, you were with the Spirit. That oil of chrism, which is the mark of the Holy Spirit in our sacramental system, was put upon you. And as the ritual goes, the priest says, you are marked out as Christ's own. And that oil of chrism is smeared on your head. And that aroma of the balsam in that chrism fills the air. And it is the sign and the symbol, the sacrament, as it were, of the Spirit of God enveloping you. So that when you go out into the wilderness of the world, that same Spirit that accompanied Jesus into the wilderness is accompanying you throughout your entire life. So that each and every day of your life, that same gift of the Spirit is with you. So you are never alone. Even when you might feel abandoned, even when you might feel that there is no one there to support you in your temptations, you are never alone. God is with you. The problem for us is that we may not be aware of it. We may have allowed our eyes to be blinded to it. And when we fall and fail, when we succumb to temptation, which is sort of the church-speak way of talking about it, when we sin, it's because we have failed to take advantage of what God has already given to us. All the tools we need to live the grace-filled, God-filled life are there with us. Always. The toolbox is full. I have a toolbox at home. I have several, actually. They're filled with all kinds of wonderful tools. Screwdrivers and chisels and hammers and all the kinds of things you need to do all kinds of little jobs around the house. But you know, I'm too lazy. I don't know how many times there was a screw that I needed to loosen. And instead of going into the garage and opening the door and opening the toolbox and finding the right screw, I would open the cutlery drawer and get out a knife. Why are you all smiling? You've all done it too, haven't you? Oh, don't say no, Robbie. I know you've done it. <laughs> I know how many knives I've got. I've got those, you know, the edges are bent. And I don't know how many times that I've tried to unscrew a screw with a knife rather than the screwdriver that was designed to do this. And it slips. And if the knife is a little too sharp, ouch. And then what do I do? I curse the knife. 
instead of recognizing where is the fault. It's not with the knife. It's with me. First of all, I'm too stupid to know that a knife is not designed to unscrew a screw. That's what a screwdriver is for. Or I'm too lazy to go out into the garage and get the wonderful screwdriver that I purchased I don't know how long ago to make sure that I had the right tool. We have a spiritual toolbox. It is called the gifts of the Spirit. And God gives them to us freely. God's grace is freely given, and it is given to each and every one of us throughout our entire life. We just don't open the box. And when we are tempted, when we need the right tool, oh, we think, oh, I'm too smart for that, or, I'm, or maybe I'm just at least in my case, I'm just too lazy and I'll fix this myself. I'll take care of it. And then when it doesn't work the way I think it should work, I start cursing. And when it's a matter of my spiritual life, I don't acknowledge that it's my problem. I curse God. until God does something to kind of knock me upside the head and wake me up again. And then I have to recognize my sin. That's what this Lent is about. It's not about punishing us at all. It's not putting us in the docket and accusing us it's about helping us realize that God is always with us, like the Spirit was with Jesus as Jesus went into the wilderness. Jesus successfully endured the temptations of Satan in the wilderness because he had every confidence in his Father. And he saw the presence of the Spirit in his life and yes, in those other stories, we hear him come up with the answer. Not because he had some special knowledge, because he was the son of God. He just knew what toolbox to open. Because what tools did he use? The ones that are at our disposal all the time. The Word of God, Holy Scripture, prayer, fasting, self-discipline, the things of this Holy Lent. And he used them. And he overcame the temptations. And he emerged and was able to proclaim the kingdom of God is here. That's, that's what he's asking of us today. Find your toolbox. Dust it off. Find the Word of God. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time disciplining yourself in looking for the tools and the grace that is with you. Find the power of the Spirit that is already yours. Find it. And by the grace of God, use it. Because then, those things that you think are beyond your power are well within your reach. Because you don't need to do them. It is God and God's life and God's power that is at your disposal. Knife away. Open the doors. Get out the toolbox. 
find the tools that I gave you. They're all there. Use them. Use them well. And you will build the kingdom of God.